it's commonly said by critics of Islam, uh, Christian atheist critics of Islam, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, that the pro that Muhammad was Muhammad invented the Muhammad invented the religion of Islam by plagiarizing ideas from uh, pre-Islamic people, pre-Islamic people like pre-Islamic or uh, people like Jews, Christians, um, you know, pagan Arabs, etc., uh, etc., et where he took practices, for example, going around the Kaaba. Uh, 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 prayer, the Muslim prayer, from you know the prayer that the Prophet Muhammad plagiarized or took these ideas or stole these ideas from Persians, Jews, uh, uh, you know Arabs, uh, uh, etc. And then he he formulated Islam from all these uh, all these Jewish, Christian, Persian, Arab ideas. He made he made Islam into you know his own his own religion, uh, taking. Taking these ideas and uh, uh, taking these pre-Islamic, uh, you know, Jewish, Christian, Arab, Persian ideas, and then uh, uh, mixing all of them to form uh, the religion of Islam, and uh, I think that's that's I think that's a false. Uh, um, I think that's a fallacious argument. It's called the genetic fallacy, uh, where you say something's wrong just because of where it came from. Now the thing with Islam is, and I think a lot of critics fail to understand this is is that Islam doesn't claim to bring everything new with it. So if you find pre-Islamic uh, pre-Islamic practices and if you find, you know, these Jewish Christian apocryphal stories in the Quran and Islamic traditions, that doesn't mean the Prophet Muhammad's copying or plagiarizing off, you know, uh, people. It just it, it, it just the Quran is confirming or Islam is confirming these true practices and these true stories. So, uh, so that's the thing to uh, bear in mind: is that Islam doesn't claim to bring everything new with it. There are some elements in Islam which you can find in pre-Islamic uh, sources, but that doesn't mean the Prophet Muhammad copied. Uh, it just means that these were true teachings or these were true stories that found their way into, you know, these Jewish, Christian, Persian, Arab uh, uh, rituals and scriptures, and Islam is confirming their veracity or their truthfulness. So it, it doesn't mean that the Prophet Muhammad is copying or plagiarizing, you know, false material. Uh, you know, so, like Muslims, like we, we as Muslims, as Sunni Muslims, we don't believe that the Prophet Muhammad brought everything new to the religion of Islam. Uh, Muhammad is the final prophet according to Islamic theology. He didn't bring something new or original. In the Quran chapter 46, uh, in the Quran chapter 40, 46 verse 9, the Quran chapter 46 verse 9, God says, say Muhammad, I am not something original among the messengers. So Prophet Muhammad never claimed to bring everything new with the religion. He never claimed to bring, you know, a religion, a religion that has everything new with it. That's, that's, um, that's a uh, people who say that just don't know um, don't know Islamic theology. Islam, Islam, and the Prophet Muhammad, the Quran and the Prophet Muhammad never claimed that. So uh, let me go into the the notion of the Kaaba. Now it's commonly said by uh, critics of Islam, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, that the Kaaba was originally built by a Yemeni person and uh, yeah, a Yemeni person in the fourth century. And uh, you know this notion that um, this notion that uh, uh, Abraham and Ishmael built the Kaaba was was invented uh, was invented later on uh, was invented later on when Islam became when, after after the rise of Islam. You know this notion that uh, uh, Abraham and Ishmael went to went to Mecca or went to Arabia and built the, the Kaaba was uh, invention by Islam and uh, that's false. For, well let me let me let me talk about this whole Mecca issue. This whole thing, you know, I, I remember I was seeing a video by Jay Smith and he was like there's no records of the Kaaba in Mecca until that that predate Islam. It all all these records of Mecca and uh, uh, the Kaaba actually post date Islam and you know Muslims made up the whole thing. Uh, and that's false, you know. Jay Smith is like literally one of the one of the stupidest Christian apologists I've met. Him and James White are literally the stupidest Christian apologists I've met. But uh, but 
Jay Smith takes it to a whole different level. Um, so again, Mukka is mentioned in the Quran. It's mentioned in Quran chapter six, verse ninety-two, and Quran chapter forty-two, verse uh, seven. So Mukka is already mentioned in the Quran. The very early Muslims knew of Mecca. So this claim that Mecca arose after Islam is utterly ridiculous. Um, you know, and then uh, uh, what? So what about the what about the rise of Mecca? What about the uh, was Mecca known in pre-Islamic times before Muhammad was even born? And I would say yes. Uh, there's a historian, there's a Greek historian named Detorius uh, Sirius, a first century historian, and he was born, uh, you know, a hundred years before, before Jesus, before Christ. He was a Greek historian, and while discussing Arabia, he wrote, the people that inhabit these parts called Biziomintines, Bizio and live among wild beasts taken in hunting. Here is a sacred temple and high veneration among all the Arabians. Uh, uh, the classical library of Decorius, the, the Sicilian, translated by uh, Booth, uh, volume 1, page, uh, 100, page 184, and I'll leave the reference um, below. Uh, and there's also a reference to Mecca, there's certainly a, a reference of uh, Makkah before uh, before Islam. There was a Christian Arab from Beirut, which is modern day Lebanon. Lebanon writes in his book El Arab Qob El Islam, Arabs before Islam. This is what he writes. He writes, "There is no mention of Makkah or Kaaba in the books of Greeks or antiquity, except what is found in the book of Deuterius Silius, the of the first century before Christ and his." Uh, discussion about the Nabians. In fact, he refers to Makkah and writes, and beyond the land of the Nabians is the region of the Bizumintians. And there is a sacred temple and high veneration among all the Arabs. And he does not stop there. He even explains as to whom Detorius refers to by using the word Bizumintians. He writes, Arabic wording is, uh, or he writes, as the Bizumintians sometimes are by it intended the Jurhums or the other Arabian tribes who are custodians of Mecca. And this is his book, Al Arab Ki Al Islam. I apologize for mispronouncing Arabic. I'm not an Arab, so I can't speak their language uh, fluently. Volume 1, page uh, 244. Um, so even pre Islamic Christians testify that there is historical evidence for, Ma for, uh, for Mecca uh, from pre Christian times. Uh, you know, and other, other, uh, other uh, Christians also admit that there was uh, that the Arabs of pre-Islamic times knew of Mecca, um, you know, and knew of Mecca and knew of the Kaaba. So this whole notion that that uh, Mecca didn't or the Kaaba didn't exist until you know the fourth century or whatever is false. Uh, Mecca, uh, Mecca and the Kaaba did exist before the advent of Christianity, as even secular as even secular historical evidence um, points to. So then, uh, so then, what about um, uh, what about the the Kaaba, right? And what about the uh, uh, who, according to pre-Islamic notions, who built the Kaaba? And I think there's strong evidence to support that the Kaaba was built by Abraham because if you read Sayyid Bukhari volume two page or I'm sorry, Sayyid Bukhari volume two of book twenty six number hadith number six five three, um, you know, um, the people people knew that Abraham built the Kaaba, right? People uh, people knew that um, that the Kaaba was built by Abraham and Ishmael. Uh, you know, uh, there's a hadith in Sayyid Bukhari, Sayyid Bukhari volume, which is found in Sayyid Bukhari uh, volume 4, book 55, uh, hadith number 570. It says the Prophet Muhammad entered Kaaba and found pictures of Abraham and Mary. Uh, you know, so so the, the, the pre-Islamic Arabs had this notion or had this belief that Abraham um, built the uh, Kaaba.
uh, you know, and this is also found in Sahih Bukhari, Volume 5, Book 59, uh, no, uh, Hadith number 584. Uh, you know, and then the Prophet Muhammad um, uh, himself uh, knew that he was from Ishmael. He knew that he was a, a descendant, he was a direct descendant from Ishmael. We, for, for the reference of this, see Sahih Muslim, Volume 6, page uh, 133, Hadith. Uh, number 5,938. So there was a pre-Islamic notion going around that, you know, um, Abraham and Ishmael built the Kaaba, and that Prophet was an ancestor, was a uh, uh, descendant of uh, um, uh, Ishmael. Now, if Muhammad was making up the whole thing that Ishmael and, uh, that Abraham and Ishmael built the Kaaba, and that he was, he, that him and his tribe, which was the Quraysh, were descendants, it, if Prophet Muhammad was making that stuff up and there was no pre-Islamic notion of Abraham and Ishmael building the Kaaba and Muhammad himself being a descendant of Ishmael, he would have been called out for it, right? He would have been, the 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 Arabs at his time would have made fun of him or they would have pointed the finger at him saying that, yeah, you're you're just making this stuff up. We never claimed to be the descendants of Ishmael. So they never did that. So even the Arabs before Islam had this belief that Abraham and Ishmael built the Kaaba and they were descendants of Ishmael. Now I will admit that there's no uh, that the uh, that the Bible or the Old Testament the book of Genesis never mentions Abraham and Ishmael going to the Kaaba. I'll admit this that, that that's true but um, evidence of uh, absence doesn't mean uh, uh, you know uh, evidence of evidence of absence it doesn't mean that that the story is uh, false. All it could mean is that Abraham and Ishmael actually, uh, this is all begging the question that the book of Genesis actually is telling the truth about these things. So the book of Genesis has been proven, um, you know, even by conservative, conservative Jewish Christian scholars to be unreliable and edited to, to, to a point, uh, you know, so even they'll, they'll admit this and, um, you know, uh, the, the book of Genesis doesn't record every single detail about Abraham. It's possible Abraham did go to Mecca or 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 Arabia and that the the whoever wrote the book of Genesis didn't know about this. That that's possible. It's also possible that uh, um uh you know uh uh Hagar and Ishmael settled in Mecca, but whoever wrote the book of Genesis didn't know that or they were uh, they uh uh you know they didn't they didn't know about that. That that's that's also that's also possible. So, um, you know, it doesn't follow that just because Islam says something different than the Bible, the, the Islamic version is a legend and the biblical event is uh, true. Um, you know, this is all, this is all just a matter of, um, uh, I, I don't, this is, this is just, uh, this is just a whole, you know, when it comes to Abraham, when it comes to the historical Abraham, this is just a big speculative uh, uh, thing. Um, you know, scholars are unsure of, where Abraham went and where his descendants went and uh, things like that. They're they're not uh, they're not certain about um, certain issues about Abraham. But regardless, um, you know uh, there was a pre-Islamic notion that Abraham and Ishmael uh, went to went to uh, Mecca, built the Kaaba, and that they were descend that the Meccans or the Arabs were descendants of Ishmael. There's a pre-Islamic notion um, about that, uh, and it's true. It, it, it is true that the Bible does not mention Abraham and Ishmael going. There's no pre, there's uh, there's no biblical sources that say Abraham and Ishmael went to Kaaba. That's true. I'm not denying that. But this is again this all begging the question whether what the Bible is saying is 100 percent accurate in, or, or or not. Um, uh, you know. So anybody who does Old Testament, anybody who knows anything about the Old Testament knows that there was unknown authorship and there was edit, editing going on. With the uh, with the books of with the five with the with the books of Genesis, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, etc. This was just uh, in the book of Isaiah. This was just uh, you know in Old Testament times, people were editing things and adding things in there, and uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So again, so there was a pre. So my point is there was a pre-Islamic notion that Abraham and Ishmael built a Kaaba, and that the Arabs were descendants of uh, Ishmael. There was a pre-Islamic notion. So this idea that Muhammad made up the whole thing is false because we have evidence to support that um, there was a pre-Islamic notion that 
that Abraham and Ishmael built the Kaaba and Muhammad was the descendant of Ishmael. There is a pre-Islamic uh, notion about that. Now, some critics might say, well, the Hadith came 200 years later. We can't, uh, you know, why are, we, why are you going to something that came 200 years after the Prophet Muhammad? Anybody who says that the Hadith, Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, Abu Dawood, Ibn Majah, etc., came 200 years after the death of Muhammad doesn't know anything about Hadith, Hadith sciences. I have this book, Studies in Hadith, uh, methodology and literature by uh, Mustafa al Azami, where he shows that the hadith were actually written by the disciples or the companions of the Prophet Muhammad and they were passed on generation to generation. And Sayyid Bukhari, Sayyid Muslim, Abu Dawood, Ibn Majah, um, Al Nisa, all those people who wrote hadith 200 years later as a critic slay, say they actually incorporated a lot of these earlier um, texts into their uh, these early these early books, these early hadith books written by the disciples of Prophet Muhammad they passed on generation to generation, they actually incorporated uh, their works into the hadith, uh, into the hadith, uh, into their hadith canons. And um, I'll just I'll just read a quick bit real quick. Uh, this video is kind of dragging on too long. I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to do that, but I just, uh, you know, there's a lot to cover here in this, uh, in this video. I'll just uh, read it. So on page 78 of this book, by the way, this is a really good book. I, I highly recommend you, you buy this. Any student of knowledge, anybody who wants to learn about, um, you know, the origins of the Hadith thing, where Islamic literature came from, um, you know, I, I recommend buying this book. But anyways, uh, he says um, on page uh, page 78, he says, uh, let's see if I can find it real quick. So he says, um, what happened to early hadith, earlier hadith literature? I'll just read this part real quick. Most of all, I mean, oh, oh, this is page 74. Oops, okay. So this is uh, Studies in Hadith. I'm reading from Studies in Hadith uh, Methodology and Literature by Mustafa al Azami. I'm reading from page 74 to page 75. Here's what he says about the earlier hadith literature. Um, uh, he says, uh, I have mentioned earlier that hundreds and thousands of books of hadith were in circulation in the first and second century. Only a few amount of this hadith literature has survived. It could be said that either what I have described is totally wrong or these books were in existence at some time but were lost later. The second hypothesis, hypothesis, hypothesis raises another problem, i.e. the negligence of the hadith of the Prophet by Muslim scholars. It, it is possible that they did not feel the necessity of hadith literature and why and so it was destroyed as a matter of fact my position is precisely incorrect these books were not destroyed nor did they perish but they were absorbed into the work of later authors when the encyclopedia type books were produced scholars did not feel the necessity to keep the early books or booklets and they slow and they slowly dis and so slowly they disappeared. To explain this point, I have described a method of quotations in early days that would prove uh, my point. Um, so basically, what most of all is saying is that there were they, these early hadith books written by the disciples or companions of Prophet Muhammad were circulating, um, you know, they were circulating in the first and second uh, century, um, you know, were absorbed or they were copied by people like Sayyid Bukhari, Sayyid Muslim, or Bukhari Muslim, etc. And these books slow, slowly disappeared or they were lost or destroyed because there was no need to keep these earlier books because they were already incorporated in, Sayyid, in, in uh, Hadith collections of uh, Bukhari, uh, Muslim, etc. Et and, um, you know, uh, the, 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 uh, so the recording of Hadith uh, let me just talk about that real quick, uh, recording of Hadith. Um, so basically, uh, most of all, al Azami says, uh, recording of Hadith in the life of the Prophet and the Companions on page 25. Uh, you know, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but, uh, you know, just to save time, but there were many uh, of the disciples or companions of Prophet Muhammad who wrote down Hadith, who wrote down Hadith booklets. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. For example, the Caliph Umar, Umar bin Khattab, who was uh, important, who was an important disciple or companion of Prophet Muhammad, uh, transmitted hadith. Um, Ali ibn Abu Talib transmitted hadith. Um, you know, uh, uh, Anas Anas bin Malik, uh, you know, who served the Prophet Muhammad for ten years, transmitted hadith. 
even a boss um, transmitted a deed thing. Nine of his students had a deed from him in written form, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, Ibn Masood trans tra transmitted a deed and we, he says, most of our Al Azami says, we have no information about the students who wrote down a deed from him, but his own book was in the possession of his uh, son. So Ibn Masood wrote a deed, one of the disciples or companions of the Prophet Muhammad. Um, uh, so, you know, again, this is a really good book uh, for anybody who wants to learn about how, you know, the Hadith were recorded and preserved and passed on uh, from the disciple, from the first generation, which was the disciples of the, the people who knew the Prophet Muhammad, the disciples and companions of the Prophet Muhammad, how it was passed on from that generation to the second generation to the third generation to the generation of uh, Bukhari Muslim, uh, Abu Dawood ibn Majah, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Uh, I would highly recommend this book. So this notion that the Hadith came 200 years later is false. It's it's um, it's a uh, it, it's uh, it's not a, it's a false argument. Or people who say that are ignorant of Hadith study. So buy this book. I'm going to leave the link in Amazon. Anybody who wants to, any Muslim or non-Muslim who wants to know the origins of Hadith, I highly recommend this book. It's less than twenty dollars. I I believe it's less than twenty dollars. Um, uh, so you know any student of knowledge. Buy this book, right? Don't don't read it online. Just just actually buy the book, um, you know, because it's it's a really good uh, it's a really good reference uh, if you want to learn about how if you want to learn the origins of how Muslim literature came to be. Buy this book and how it was preserved by the first generation, the second generation of Muslims. Buy this book. Just just buy it. Um, so, uh, what about, um, so again, and, uh, I did some more reading into this because, um, you know, this was one of the, I'll be honest, this, I'll be honest, this was one of the things that actually did trouble me a few years ago, whether Abraham and his son Ishmael built the Kaaba or not. I remember researching this issue, uh, what, eight years ago, seven years ago or something like that, where I, I was having, uh, you know, I was having... Uh, or, you know, so, uh, some critics were saying that, you know, Abraham and Ishmael didn't build the Kaaba. There's no pre Islamic notion of that. I did a lot of research into this a few years ago, and I found out that that's actually false. There was a pre Islamic notion of Abraham and Ishmael actually building the Kaaba. Um, you know, the only thing the critics were honest about was that this, this claim is not found in the book of Genesis. This claim that Abraham and Ishmael went all the way to. Uh, Makkah and built the Kaaba is not found in you know the uh, the Bible and that that that's true. Um, so, uh, but again, even if even if we read Ibn Ishaq, so I'm I'm gonna bring up Ibn Ishaq. See, look, I got Ibn Ishaq's book right here. Um, you know, as people who are, who follow my channel already know, I I, I have I actually have the book. Um, uh, you know, it, it talks about how there was a pre-Islamic notion. That Abraham and Ishmael were the builders of the were the original builders of the Kaaba. Uh, now you might be saying, "Why am I quoting from Ibn Ishaq when I consider it unreliable?" Well, I, I'm only I only consider stories about the Prophet Muhammad in this book to be unreliable because they don't have chains of transmission in them. So I only consider the stories of the Prophet Muhammad found in this book. To be at times unreliable because everything needs to be looked at by the chain of transmission, right? That's why I reject the uh, the killing of Abu Afaq, not because it's a bad story about the Prophet Muhammad, but it's because there's no source for it. There's no it's not or there's no source for it. Same thing with the uh, torture of Kinana ibn Rabi uh, by fire. There's no source for it. So I reject the story, those stories because there's no source. Those stories about the Prophet Muhammad because there's no sources for it. But there's still some historical value. There's still historical value to this book because Ibn Ishaq did record some important pre-Islamic history, pre-Islamic history of the Arabs. So that so it's good for that. So it's good for knowing what uh, what the what the earliest. Uh, it's good to knowing. It's good for knowing what the Arabs believed during the time of the Prophet Muhammad and before the time of the Prophet before the birth of Muhammad. It says uh, on page uh, 35, so this book is does have historical value uh, to it. 
when it comes to learning about their history, the history of Arabs and uh, things like that. So on uh, Ibn Ishaq, on Ibn Ishaq page 35, it talks about the story of Amr bin Lu and the account of idols of the Arabs. It says, and this this is the chain of transmission. This chain of transmission uh, seems to this chain of transmission is authentic. It says the the person who um, changed the religion of Ishmael from monotheism to polytheism or worshiping idols was a man named uh, Amr bin Lu. Um, you know, and the Prophet Muhammad said uh, that uh, he was the first to change the religion of Ishmael and set up idols and institute the custom of Bahra, Shabe, Wase, and Hamil. And then it's uh, and then uh, Ibn Ishaq uh, records that they say at the beginning of stone worship among the sons of Ishmael was when Mecca became too small for them and they wanted more room in the country. Everyone who left town took with them a stone from the sacred area to do honor to it. Uh, whenever they settled, they set up and walked around it as they went around Kaaba. This led them to worship what stones they uh, pleased and those which made impression on them. Thus, generation passed, they forgot their primitive faith and adopted another religion for that of Abraham and Ishmael. They worshipped idols and adopted the same errors of the people before them. Yet they retained and held fast practices going back to the time of Abraham, such as honoring the temple, going around it, uh, the great and little pilgrimage, and the standing of Arafat and Moaza, sacrificing the victims in the pilgrimage, cry in the great and little pilgrimage while introducing elements which had no place in the religion of Abraham. Uh, you know, so, so basically, you know, the, the Arabs did, uh, the Arabs after the time of Ishmael, or Ishmael's direct descendants did install or they did put, they did, uh, 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 you know, forget about the religion of, of Abraham and Ishmael, and then they became polytheists um, after the death of Ishmael, you know. So, um, but they still remembered the rights of the God. They still remembered what their father, what their fathers, Abraham and Ishmael, used to do around the God. They used to go around the Kaaba. They used to honor the Kaaba and, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so then, uh, uh, so, you know, this book, uh, you know, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but, uh, you know, if you, uh, this is uh, the the story of the Kaaba, how, how the Kaaba was built by, you know, Abraham and Ishmael, uh, how this, there was a pre-Islamic notion that Abraham and Ishmael built the Kaaba. It's found on Ibn Ishaq, page uh, 35 to... 35, and if you want to know like how this digging of the Zamzam and all that stuff it was pre-Islamic, it was a pre-Islamic notion, um, you know, you can find this on Ibn Ishaq, page 35 to page uh, 40, 46 and 47. So Ibn Ishaq, page 35 to, four, uh, to 47, talked about the, the construction of the Kaaba and, uh, by Abraham and Ishmael and how the Arabs became idol worshippers or pagans um, after the death of Abraham and uh, Ishmael. So again, this is on Ibn Ishaq, pages uh, 35 to uh, 47. Uh, you know, so if you want to know about the history of the Kaaba, uh, you know, and, and its ties to Abraham and Ishmael, I recommend this book, Ibn Ishaq, page, uh, Ibn Ishaq, pages 35 to uh, 46, as I said. So again, and uh, so what about the Muslim prayer? Um, you know, and uh, did Muhammad just make up this concept, or did Muhammad just plagiarize this concept from um, other from other people like uh, Jews, Christians, uh, you know, Arabs, Persians, uh, etc. So I have this book, I have the history of uh, uh, Dubri, uh Volume Six, uh, Muhammad at uh, Mecca. Um, and rem remember what I said. Um, you know, in, in my previous videos that uh, Al Dubri warns people that his books are filled with authentic and inauthentic narrations and we most we have to uh, we have to determine what's what's correct and what's not. So how do we determine what's authentic and what's not authentic by the chain of transmission? So the the following stories I'm I'm going to be uh, citing 
um, you know, actually do have uh, authentic chains of transmission to them. So I'm not I'm not quoting from uh, I'm not quoting from you know weak sources here, or I'm not quoting from uh, weak uh, weak stories here. Uh, it says, well, let me just uh, talk about the history of the Kaaba because if you read Al Tabari again, I'm reading from Al Tabari, volume six, page uh, fifty one. It talks about the history of of Kaaba. So let me just talk about that real quick. Uh, it says that um, that it, it says that the Kaaba had been destroyed when the people of Noah were drowned, and God commanded his friend Abraham and Abraham's son Ishmael to rebuild it on its foundation, on its original foundations. This they did, as stated in the Quran. So in the Quran, chapter two, verse one hundred and twenty-seven, it talks about how Abraham and Ishmael built the Kaaba. Uh, uh, the verse says, and when Abraham and Ishmael were raising the foundations of the house, uh, Abraham prayed, Our Lord, accept from us this duty. Only you are the hearer, nor. Um, you know, it had, it had not, it had not had any custodians since its destruction in the time of Noah. So, uh, so al uh, uh accounts um, the construction of the God. So let me just read this real quick. It says, Then God commanded Abraham to settle his son by the Kaaba, wishing thereby to show a mark of esteem to one whom he later en ennobled by means of his proper moment. Abraham, the friend of the compassionate, and son Ishmael were custodians of the Kaaba after the time of Noah. At this time, Makkah was in an, uh, uninhabited, and surrounding country was inhabited by the Jorhum, which was a tribe in uh, you know, ancient Yemen, in Akhlamek. Uh, Ishmael married a woman of the Jorham. Of this subject, Amr bin Hath ibn Mu'ad said, We allied ourselves by marriage to a man with the noblest of fathers. His sons are of us, and we are his brothers-in-law. Um, after Abraham, Ishmael became the custodian of the Kaaba. After him, Nabit and his Joromi mother. When Nabit died, since, Abraham, and since Ishmael's sons were not numerous, Joram seized the custodianship. Uh, you know, uh, and it says uh, the same. The same Arab says we are custodians of the Kaaba after Nabit. We circumcised, we circumambulated it, and good was manifest. The first of Joram to be custodians of Kaaba was Moad, followed by his descendants generation after generation. Eventually, the Joram acted wrong, wrongful in Mecca, uh, held held uh, lawful that which is forbidden misinterpreted the wealth which had been uh, presented to the Kaaba and oppressed those who came to Mecca. Uh, you know, and then uh, al Tabari on pages 52 to 53 talks about how the Jorhum um, basically um, corrupted Mecca or they they became evil and, and they they, uh, they set up, uh, you know, they did evil things in um, they did evil things in uh, Mecca, you know, for, fornicating, oppressing people, etc., oppressing innocent people. Uh, and then on page uh, on page fifty five, it, it talks about you know, and then it, it goes into the history of of uh, the Kaaba. So basically, there were so basically the Jorham or a tribe of, a tribe in Yemen and. Um, you know the the sons of the sons of Ishmael introduced, or the the descendants of the sons of Ishmael, the direct descendants, uh, became pagan, or they became polytheist, polytheist, uh, according to you know according to Ibn Asak's uh, book, page uh, thirty five uh, through thirty seven, and according to Al in the history of October, volume six, uh, pages uh, what, what page was that? Page, uh, page fifty one onwards. Uh, the the Yemeni tribe of Jorham became oppressive in the land of, of Mecca. They became uh, they caused corruption in the land and they caused oppression, and uh, they basically corrupted uh, Mecca. So there were there were two corruptions of Mecca. There were the, there were two people who who basically um, corrupted Mecca or made it into a, a pagan and bad place. It was the uh, the, the descendants of uh, the, 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 the generation of the generation of uh, descendants of Ishmael and it was the Yemeni tribe of uh, Jorham.
according to, again, pre-Islamic sources. So you know, the, the good thing about al tabari is he, he cites pre-Islamic sources, or he cites um, um, pre-Islamic sources that, that say this thing. So Prophet Muhammad didn't make up this, Prophet Muhammad didn't make up the, the Abrahamic or Ishmael, the Abrahamic and Ishmael uh, 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 origins of the Kaaba and the origin, the, uh, the Arabic, the Arab, uh, 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 the the Arab ancestry to Israel. He didn't make that up. It was already a pre-Islamic notion going around um, talking about you know the uh, there was a pre-Islamic notion that Abraham and Israel built the Kaaba and they were descendants of um, uh, Ishmael, as the, as I said in the Hadith uh, before. So what about the? So I'll just wrap up with the um, what about the Islamic prayer? What about the Salah? The the Salah? The Salah? Um, you know the salah. There's there's physical ritual. Salah is a physical ritual where the the Muslim would point to the Kaaba or Mecca. They would the Qibla would the Qibla used to be Jerusalem. Then then God told the Prophet to change it to to Mecca or the Kaaba. So uh, Muslims would do the um, the the physical prayer. The physical prayer. Any Muslim, every Muslim is. <laughs> Every Muslim is familiar with the Muslim prayer. The Muslim prayer, um, you know, the the Muslim prayer. You go like, you go like this. You say, you, you know, you say Surah Fatiha, and there's another Surah. Then you bow down. You, know, you say Swan al Bills and Swan al and so on. And then you get up and you say Rukn al And then you uh, you do the uh, uh, the Muslim prayer. So uh, you know, uh, so Muslims pray, you know, five times a day. Um, uh, you know, Muslims pray to God five times, uh, uh, five times a day. Um, you know, to 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 get closer to God or to to, to communicate um, with God. So, uh, so the 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 critics would say that the Prophet Muhammad stole or Prophet Muhammad plagiarized this idea of Salah from pre-Islamic people. Pre-Islamic people being, you know pre-Islamic Arabs, or he, he copied off his contemporaries, or he copied off people around him, he copied off, you know, Jews, Jews who were praying that way, Arabs who were praying that way, um, uh, you know, Christians who were praying that way, etc., etc. Well, the, the problem is, we don't know how the Arabs used to, or, I'm sorry, we don't know how these Jews and Christians used to make their 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 prayers whether there was physical prayers or not we don't know we don't know that for sure and uh, another thing is if you read the bible right if you read the, both the old testament and new testament uh people used to pray the same way muslims pray or the same way muhammad used to pray like king david used to put his head down and um uh, uh you know in the old testament times abraham would put his uh, would pray using his uh, putting his face down. Moses in the Old Testament would pray putting his, you know, putting his face down and getting up. Um, you know, uh, uh, Jesus, uh, Jesus, according to the Gospel of Matthew and the, and the Gospel of uh, Luke, etc., would would pray putting his face down. So this, uh, so this concept of prayer, putting your face down, like the Muslims do. Um, is actually found in the Bible. It, there are biblical verses that that show that you know that biblical figures like Abraham, King David, Moses, uh, uh, Jesus, you know, all these uh, Old Testament, New Testament figures would pray the same way, um, the same way you can you can find in Muslim prayers. Um, you know, so uh, but regardless, um, where did the where did the concept of prayer come from? Did Muhammad just take this idea from people around him or was it divinely um, prescribed? We read in the History of Al-Tabari, uh, page 177, um, it talks about uh, the History of Al-Tabari, volume 6, page 177, the book, the book I'm reading right now. It talks about on page 77, the first rituals of Islam are prescribed. So, uh, uh, Al-Dabri says, the first of the duties of a song to be prescribed for a moment by God, after that of confessing God's oneness, disavowing graven images and idols, and repudiating false gods, is said to have been that of ritual prayer or worship solo. Uh, according, to, according to scholars, um, when ritual prayer was prescribed uh, for the messenger of God, 
Gabriel came to him while he was in the upper part of Mecca and dug his heel into the side of the wadi, uh, whereby a spring gushed out. While the messenger of God watched, watched him, Gabriel then performed the ritual ablution, which would be wudu, which would be the Arabic word of wudu, in order to show him how to null, how to purify himself in prayer. Then the messenger of God performed the ritual ablution as he's seen Gabriel do. Next, Gabriel rose up and led him in prayer, and the prophet followed his actions. Then Gabriel departed, and messenger, the messenger of God went to Khadija and performed the ablution for her in order to show her how to purify herself for prayer, as Gabriel uh, had shown him. She performed the ablution as he had done, and he had led her in prayer as Gabriel led him, and she followed his actions. So then, so then, on page seventy-eight to page um, eighty, it talks about how the five prayers were prescribed according to uh, Al Tabari, volume six, page one hundred and seventy-eight to uh, page one hundred and eighty. It talks about how uh, how uh, how Muhammad ascended into the heavens, the Ezra and Mirage, the, the night journey. He went from from Mecca to Jerusalem all the way to heaven, and then Moses was the Moses was the one who said Muslims should pray or less time. They should do the five, the five. Um, they should do five prayers instead of fifty prayers. And uh, um, you know, eventually Muhammad agreed with uh, with that. And uh, God said, uh, God agreed, or uh, God uh, said that um, God God uh, God. God accepted Muhammad's request to lessen the uh, burden of prayer, um, you know, uh, uh, because God, uh, God uh, wanted to uh, uh, wanted to lessen the uh, the prayers for uh, for the Muslims. So again, this found in Al Tabari, this whole the whole prescribing of prayers and so on, or how the rituals of the rituals of Islam, or the the the, the history of Salah or prayer, is found in Al Dabari, um, volume uh, uh, volume six, page one hundred and seventy seven to uh, volume six, page one hundred seventy seven to uh, page uh, yeah, I'm sorry, volume six, page seventy seven to uh, page eighty. So um, you know, so the whole I the. The Muslim prayer of the Salah was established by, or it was it was shown to Muhammad by the angel Gabriel, and the angel Gabriel got that from God. God told angel Gabriel that's how you pray. Gabriel came to Muhammad, and Muhammad did that, and then Khadijah was the person who followed in the Prophet Muhammad's footsteps, and the Muslims followed that 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 prayer that Gabriel taught Prophet Muhammad. So uh, uh, Gabriel was the one who. Um, taught Prophet Muhammad the, the Salah or the prayer. Uh, so that's how uh, Muhammad learned, you know, Salah. And uh, I have this book. Uh, this is actually, that's an authentic story because I have this book, uh, the Prophetic Biography, um, where, uh, you know, according to the, I'll just read the Hadith real quick. Uh, man, this, this video is going on too long. Uh, let's look at this. It says Gabriel. It says the prophet learns ablution uh, and prayer from Gabriel and teaches them to Khadijah, and Gabriel prescribes the due times of prayer. Uh, um, so this whole story of Gabriel teaching the prophet Muhammad uh, the prayer of Salah and uh, prescribing the times of prayer is actually authentic um, from Al Tabari Volume Six. Uh, this is. Uh, this is found in Sayyid Bukhari uh, uh, 0190, Sayyid Muslim 478, Muslim Ahmad, Volume 6, page uh, 272, um, you know, uh, Ibn Hajar in Al As Sabah, Volume 8, page uh, 60, and uh, um, Angel Gabriel describing the, the prayer. Or the prayer times would be found in Musan Akmal Hadith number 3081, uh, Sunan Abu Dawood uh, Hadith number 393, and Al, and, uh, Al Tirmidhi 
in uh, one, uh, uh, hadith number 149 in Al Hakim and Al Mustadar, volume 1, page 193. And again, I'll be leaving all my references uh, below. So, you know, the, so in conclusion or in summary, you know, there was pre Islamic notion that Abraham and Ishmael built the Kaaba. The people who corrupted the Kaaba, or the people who uh, who installed, you know, paganism or polytheism or the worship of idols in the Kaaba were Abraham's descendants in the Yemeni tribe of Joram. They're the ones who corrupted Kaaba. They're the ones who, who um, introduced paganism and idol worship into, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, into the, the city of Mecca. Or they're the ones who altered the, the religion of uh, Abraham and, uh, you know, introduced paganism and idol worship into it. Um, you know, there was a pre-Islamic notion that uh, Abraham and Ishmael uh, built the Kaaba, went around the Kaaba, uh, did, uh, you know, did the, the rituals of Hajj that we found today. There was a pre-Islamic, the problem didn't make that, make that stuff up. There was a pre-Islamic notion that, that Muhammad, and, Muhammad and his tribe were descendants of Ishmael, according to the hadith that I just cited in uh, Sayyid Sayy Bukhari. Uh, you know, and the, the prayer or the Salah was, uh, was established by the Prophet Muhammad didn't plagiarize or take that, uh, uh, take the notion of Salah from, or he didn't plagiarize that idea of Salah from his con or people around him. The angel Gabriel taught the Prophet Muhammad how to pray, and the angel Gabriel um, taught the Prophet Muhammad when to pray, or he prescribed the prayer times, you know, Fajr, uh, Zohar, uh, uh, Asr, uh, Mugger, Isha. So the angel Gabriel, um, you know, got told the Prophet Muhammad that information. The angel Gabriel um, got that, or God told angel Gabriel about that. The, about the prayer and the prayer times, etc., etc. So uh, again, I, you know, this while wow, this video, is, <laughs> this video is almost an hour. Um, so I hope this clarifies, you know, the rituals of Islam, the origins of the Kaaba, and uh, where um, the notion of uh, uh, where where Salah, where the where the Muslim prayer came from, according to um, authentic uh, uh, Muslim. Um, uh, sources. Again, Islam does not claim to bring everything new with it. Islam does not claim to be something uh, new. Like I just cited in the Quran verse, and I'll cite it again, the Quran chapter 46, verse 9, God says, Say, Muhammad, I am not something original among the messengers. So Prophet Muhammad didn't claim to bring everything new. He didn't claim to bring everything uh, new to the religion of Islam. You can find some pre-Islamic stories uh, uh, you know, you can find some pre-Islamic uh, stories, etc., uh, incorporate, incorporated into Islam. But that doesn't mean one was plagiarizing. It just means that, uh, you know, these were true stories or these were true rituals. And Islam came, Islam came to confirm their veracity or their, their uh, Islam came to, to confirm their, um, Islam came to confirm their uh, their truthfulness, or their uh, Islam came to confirm their correct um, that these were correct teachings, uh, you know, that the pre-Islamic people um, had. So again, Islam is uh, Islam is not Islam is see the thing, the way I see it is Judaism, Christianity, and Islam are progressive revelation, right? So um, you know these. One religion was leading to another. Another religion was was uh, leading to uh, another. Um, you know, so that's that's just the way uh, that's just the way I see it. That's just the way uh, I think of things. Uh, now, if you know, people want to disagree or people have their own thoughts on you know the origins of uh, of the rituals of Islam, like the Kaaba and Salah and uh, the, the the prayer, etc., just just comment below and. Um, you know, hopefully we can have a uh, respectful decision while this video is pretty long. So I'll just uh, I'll just uh, wrap up uh, with that. Just stay tuned. A lot more videos are up ahead. Um, if you go to the community uh, tab in my uh, YouTube section, you can see um, uh, you can see what videos are uh, yet to be released. Uh, stay safe and until um, next time, guys.